Good morning, Saints. I'm on my work break, and um, somebody sent me a video in my DM on Instagram. If you don't have my Instagram, I'm going to put it in the description so you guys can talk to me. I'm also going to put my Discord in the description as well. But somebody sent me a video. I think he may be a babe in Christ. And this video apparently made him question a lot. Um, sometimes when you're a babe in Christ, you can get to the point to where you see something that makes you question your faith. It's like uh, almost attacking your faith. And I think this is what's happening. I do not want this. This is an issue. I don't want to see anybody um, in the body of Christ um, feeling like their faith has been weakened because of a false teaching. So I'm going to stand up against it whenever somebody brings it to my attention. So we're going to review this video and see what kind of mess, what kind of crap, what kind of mess and all that this this is talking about. So I don't even know the channel, but it's titled, Does the Bible Teach Faith Alone? Let's see what they say. Not do anything that pleases God. We can't do any good works. So good works are not what save us. <laughs> need to know is that salvation is by faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ. Justification is by putting our trust in Christ and in Christ alone, not in our theology textbooks, not in our creeds, as important as they may be, not in our confessions. He who believes has passed from death into life. In other words, you get eternal life not when you die, you get it when you believe. And if by definition, Life is eternal, you can't lose it. Faith alone, which means that faith is not a work. You gotta catch this. Faith is not a work that you do. You don't say, well, he does all the work, but I have to supply faith. Romans 2.13, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. In this video, I will show you. So is that his proof verse for saying that we need to work for salvation? Let's go back to that. Let's move my, my face out the way. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Well, I mean, a lot of times these people take verses out of context and they don't like, they don't look at the other parts of the Bible to see what the other parts of the Bible says, cross references and all that. Because I mean, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. And I'm going to show you what another verse says. We're justified by faith. So what is he going to say to that? Like <clears throat> Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, I mean, like whatever he, the scripture that he brought up in Romans cannot contradict that. This is from the same book. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's just a different chapter, being justified freely by his grace. I mean, Romans proves faith alone. So I don't know what this guy is on. Romans 3.28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without deeds of the law. Because Romans 3.28 literally just contradicts how he interprets that. So he's in Romans 2, so it's a chapter before. I believe this is Paul speaking in Romans. That he's basically saying, calling out hypocrisy, essentially. You who are judging based on the law will be judged by the law. But circumcision, we are circumcised um, into, grafted into being a spiritual Jew, being a chosen people, grafted into that by our faith. <laughs> I mean, Romans, again, as I showed you earlier, teaches justification by faith. But I believe in here, chapter 2 is talking about those who are being hypocritical and actually looking at the law. Apostle Paul is writing to the Christians in Rome. It was a new church, the new church. And it said he probably did this while he was in Corinth on his third missionary journey. Paul wrote Romans to unite the Jewish and Gentile Christians in Rome in the gospel. So apparently, you know, there was some false teachings probably been thrown around or potential false teachings being thrown around. And he's making the distinction, hey, if you want to live by the law, you're going to be judged by the law. So going back to that guy's verse 213, for it is not the hearers of the law, who are just before God, but the doers of the law will be justified. That's literally impossible to be a complete, 100% law abider. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it just shows how impossible it is uh, without faith. Because if you try to live up to the measure of the law, 100%, and that means you can't have any error. That means you have to be perfect. Nobody can do the law 100%. 
Well, you can't be justified. You can only be justified by the law if you completely obey 100% of the time. You have one error, <laughs> one error, one mistake, one sin will send you to hell if you try to live up to the, the law completely. So, of course, Romans is not going to contradict the massive amount of scriptures that say salvation is by belief and by faith alone. It, it just can't. It cannot contradict that. For God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. In this video, I will show you that the concept of faith alone is a man-made religion. Jesus... <laughs> what? <laughs> Game over. <laughs> I mean, like, I just got all these sound effects, but I mean, how is that man made? Uh, faith alone, like, it's being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without deeds of the law. Um, so how is that man made when the Bible literally teaches that? Romans 3.28 literally teaches faith. We're justified by faith. Without deeds of the law, exactly the opposite of what this guy is saying. So, I mean, did he look at Romans 3.28? Like, what does he have to say about that? Uh, yeah, these guys are just foolish. Never taught us faith alone is all you need to enter the kingdom of heaven. James 2.24. Ah, uh, here we go with James. Here we go with James. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Yeah, and I just gave you the verse where we're justified by faith. <laughs> James 2.24 is talking about, um, it's not talking about saving faith. It's talking about profitable faith. Profitable faith that will profit others, other people who may need help and just the kingdom of God. But it's not talking about saving faith. Faith required for salvation. Yes, if you don't put in work and you you hope, you hope that somebody gets taken care of. Maybe you see somebody on the street they're homeless and you just say, I hope you do well. I hope you're going to do good and you're going to be okay. But you do no work to help them out. Well, what is that going to what is that going to profit? Nobody. Because you're not actually doing any work. So that's what it's talking about. Not salvation. Faith. This verse proves to us that faith alone is not biblical. Faith alone is... No, it doesn't prove that. <laughs> teaching from the devil himself. Because what is this guy going to say? <laughs> to the scripture I just showed you. What is he going to say? To Romans 3.28, <laughs> we conclude a man is justified by faith without the ease of the law. Like, uh, so you have to answer to that scripture. So, James 2.24 will be twisted and misrepresented by Protestants. They will try to argue that James 2.24 is not talking about justification to God. The only problem with this argument is... It could also be talking to justification before men. But yeah, not before God. Justification means you're seen righteous in God's eyes. And if you're justified by works, I mean, how many works would you need to do? They, they can't answer that. How many works would you need to do to be justified before God? Before God sees you as a righteous person, how many good works do you need to do? What type of works? Uh, do you need to save five people's lives <laughs> who are about to die? Do you need to uh, give... $20 million to the church? Do you need to give $10? Like, do you need to visit 20 people in the hospital who are sick? Like, how, how many good works do you need to do before you're seen as righteous? Um, one work, two works, you know, a million works, they can't answer that. It is completely contradicting scripture and makes no sense when we read the context. James 2.21 was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? <clears throat> the three verses right before... He justified before men. <clears throat> God knows the heart. So it's like, if God knows the heart, why would we need to do any work to show anything to God? It's like, that's that's showing that we don't have... We don't trust that God is all-knowing. Because God knows our heart before we actually do anything in the physical he knows what's in our heart. So why would, he, why would we need to? All right. Let's say, let's say, you know, God is all knowing, right? So God's going to know if I move this coffee cup up here before I actually do it. If he's all knowing, he's going to know I'm going to move the coffee cup right here. I'm doing it. He knew I was going to do it before I actually did it. <laughs> he knew that. So what are you talking about? You don't need to do any type of physical action to prove anything to God. 
4 James 2 24 explains to us the story of Abraham in Genesis where Abraham was justified before God did you hear that he wasn't justified by any man but he was justified by God because of his work he showed God with works that he had faith so he could obtain grace that is why James 2 24 after explaining this says you are not justified oh well, I wonder if this guy's gonna make it to heaven he you know he doesn't even know if he's gonna make it to heaven he has absolutely no idea because how many works do you need to do to know that you're just you're justified before God by your work? How many works? They don't have an answer to that. Maybe he can be like uh, Mark the Messenger, which he says nobody's saved. Nobody's currently saved. So, I mean, that's essentially what you got to believe if you're works-based salvation. You can't know if you're saved because you, you don't know how many good works you're doing. You're just going to have to find out when <laughs> When you die, you know, did you make it or did you not? Did I do enough good works or did I not do enough good works? Nobody is saved, essentially, you know, if you believe in works-based salvation. By faith alone. This verse alone refutes faith alone. But I want to nail the point even more. Romans. This dude isn't nailing anything, bro. 2.13. For not the hearers of the law are justified before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. This verse refutes. Yeah, you already said that faith alone and once saved always saved it shows us that you can have faith but if you do not follow god's commandments you will not be justified and it very specifically says before god first john 2 4 whoever says i know him but does not keep what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in that person math hold on let's go back to what he said whoever says i know him but does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is is not in him. It doesn't say the person is going to go to hell if they don't do everything that they should do. It's not saying that, but I believe First John is talking about fellowship, and um, it's pretty clear because nobody does all the commands 100% of the time. Nobody does all the commands. Everything that you should do, nobody does 100% of the time. So, I mean, does that mean you're automatically going to go to hell if you don't obey a command? This guy speaking has not obeyed every single thing that God wanted him to do. So is he going to hell now because he messed up and disobeyed a commandment? <laughs> but does not keep what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. Matthew 19, 17, who said to him, Why askest thou me concerning good? One is good, God. But if thou wilt enter the life, keep the commandments. Hebrews 10, 26, Dear friends, if life Let's go back to that one. Commandments. Matthew nineteen seventeen, he said to him, "Why askest thou me concerning good? One is good, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments." So going back over this scripture, he just went over. This is coming from the part of scripture talking about the rich young ruler, and starting at verse sixteen. And someone came to him and said, "Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life?" So Jesus is coming to this guy. This guy is coming at Jesus the wrong way. He's thinking that he can earn his salvation. So this is how Jesus responds. And he said to him, Why are you asking me about what is good? There's only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which is, he's just responding to the guy on how he came at him. Because the guy obviously thinks, well, he can earn his way to salvation. I mean, he's rich. <laughs> what he? I guess he wants to maybe give some money, do something good to earn his way to salvation. And Jesus responds, hey, keep the commandments. If you want to get to heaven by earning it, you need to keep everything. <laughs> you need to do 100% of the time. But it's impossible. See, the rich young ruler does not have the right idea about how you actually obtain eternal life. And then he said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept, and what am I still lacking? And I'm sure <laughs> that rich young ruler is, is actually lying on here because he's saying he's never lied before. He's never lied before. He's never dishonored his mother and father before. He's never um, did something that, that shows that he didn't love his neighbor as himself. So, I mean... It, it seems to me that Jesus is pointing out the contradiction in this guy. Hey, you must keep all these commandments perfectly if you want to obtain eternal life. But he can't do it. He doesn't understand it. Jesus said to him, if you wish to be complete, go and sell all your possessions. 
give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when the young man heard the statement, he went away grieving for he was one who owned much property. So yeah, the guy came to Jesus with the wrong idea. I can earn my way. Jesus said, hey, if you want to do that, hey, this is what you got to do. <laughs> you got to be perfect in law abiding, which is impossible. So one is good, God. But if thou wilt enter the life, keep the commandments. Hebrews 10, 26. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. Yeah, so that's not saying you can lose your salvation. A lot of false prophets take that out of context. That's just talking to the uh, the Jewish Christians, the Jewish Christians who just converted pretty recently from Judaism to Christianity. And they were flirting with the temptation of going back to the practices of Judaism. And Paul is saying that, hey, if you go back to those practices and try to sacrifice on altars, animals and stuff, there's no, that, that cannot cover your sins. Jesus has already covered your sins by his one and final sacrifice, his, the last sacrifice needed. That completely covers all your sins. If you're going to go back to the old way, that's going to do nothing for you. People choose to ignore these verses because they want to live in sin. They want to... <laughs> Straw man, no. <laughs> that's bearing false witness, actually. Because, I mean, I don't want to live in sin. And I'm not... That's not why... It's just a lot of assumptions this guy's coming up with. To feel justified for their demonic, graceful actions against God. They must convince themselves that they can live in sin and be saved. That is completely heretical and contradicts and undermines God. Here's an argument that a lot of uneducated Protestants use. And if you have to work your way to heaven, then why did Jesus even die on the cross? All right, guys, I got to get back to work. I couldn't finish the full video, but I got to get back to work. It's just too long. He's going over too many scriptures. And yeah, I just can't address everything in time. But yeah, this guy's a false teacher. And the guy who asked me to address this in the video, do not worry about what this guy's saying because <clears throat> he can't keep the law 100%. Based on his own theology, he is going to hell because he cannot keep it 100%. 100? How is he going to do that? I mean, does he believe that he doesn't sin anymore? First John 1 8 says, for those who say they have no sin, they are a liar, and the truth is not in them. So, I mean, the only way his theology could work is if he doesn't sin, if he just completely stops sinning. Because if he does sin, well, all the scriptures that he went over are completely null and void because he's breaking the commandments. <laughs> he's not following Jesus by sinning. He's breaking the commandments, and he just went over the scripture saying, hey, if you break the commandments— and he's, a, he's uh, connecting that with salvation. If you break the commandments, essentially, you're not a Christian. And you're going to hell. But So the only way their theology could work is if they don't sin. But Scripture says, hey, that person who says they don't sin, they are a liar. And the truth is not in them. So they're actually lying um, by false teaching. If they say they have no sin, they're also a liar. So yeah, don't worry about these people, y'all. Um, they're false teachers. They do not have understanding. They're not wise. They lack a good judgment and the truth is not in them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope this helps. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you in Jesus' mighty name.